Next up, we have Naomi Kwase. She is a designer and product release manager at Ingrain. Earlier in her career, she, she did pioneering UX work in the gaming industry at Electronic Arts. She is also active as a mentor with various organizations for women and girls in technology. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes for Tim to get set up. We're good? Okay, so while we're getting, oh, there we go. Um, so Tim, Tim Hayes is also along with me. Tim is one of the engineers from our team. Uh, Engrain is a software company from Vancouver, BC, Canada. So just a few hours by plane north. Um, we are known for having our established uh, 3D desktop software product, uh, Producer Pro. Um, it al allows you pretty much to create an entire training course uh, in 3D on the equipment that is relevant to your workplace. Um, we started working in augmented reality. This team started working together about a year ago. Our first crack was to create a, a demo. So we created a demo, we took it to a conference and it met with great reception, but we did realize that this was a, a custom thing. We built a custom thing that would only work for one particular piece of equipment what were we going to do from there? So we wanted to harness the features that exist in Producer Pro. And as I speak, you can see Tim using some of those, those features. Um, but we wanted to do it in a way that would be repeatable, that was scalable, and that would allow our customers to reuse their 3D models that are expensive to create and um, use those same models and get them onto a mobile platform and do augmented reality. So just a little bit about Producer Pro. You've seen uh, Tim doing a few things. You can manipulate the object. You can see um, internal parts, and you can see them in context view of the whole piece of equipment without having to take parts away. Um, it really does do a great job in replacing the paper uh, technical manual, and it, it, can do, um, it can allow you to create the steps of those uh, work orders, tasks, tickets, procedures, whichever terminology you happen to use in your particular industry. Uh, for our purposes, when I say a work order, what I mean is um, a step-by-step how-to of completing a task that you might see listed out in one, two, three steps in a technical manual. So uh, how are we doing? Good. Oh, Tim's got a little flow going there. That would show a fluid or airflow in a piece of equipment without having to start the equipment up or take it apart. Um, our big thing for the last, I guess, four to six months since that conference was to create a bridge for our customers to go from the desktop um, to a mobile platform. So we've got this rea augmented reality builder, uh, and it allows you to, I guess, define some settings uh, as to your wishes, and then you can add maybe some key diagrams from a technical manual in, uh, there's a tab there called image resources. Uh, you could add some key diagrams, maybe for the purposes of a pump like this, uh, pressure curves. Um, you can also add videos in there, maybe a safety video. Here we actually have a animated video of the virtual equipment doing the task that we'll show you in augmented reality. Good, so far? Yep, yep doing good, okay. We can go ahead and this is the push of the button. So Tim's gonna export this package. It's the 3D model with all of its information and it's packaged with those diagrams and the video into a nice bundle. And what we'll do then is uh, get that onto an iPad. Right now it's through the uh, iTunes library. In the future, um, the viewer that you'll see, the viewer app that's on the iPad would be something that's available for free on the App Store unless, and this is actually highly possible, unless we actually get to hands-free first. So yes, we're using a tablet platform. Of course, that's not entirely practical in the workplace, but for right now, consider that as an output to show you what we can do, and think of it as unplugging the tablet and plugging it into eyewear, a projection system, something hands-free. How are we going? We're doing okay? So another thing you might have noticed if you came in a bit early and took a look at our pump, uh, we are using right now a 2D marker tracking system. Um, we're using uh, Mateo's SDK to help us uh, with the tracking and the registration. That was a conscious choice on our part because we want the performance to be the priority. 
and we do know that, and you have seen from uh, the show floor, the 3D object recognition, the continuous tracking, it's, it's just about there. So that's one of the things that we're going to move to next. We'll have that continuous system. You won't have to see the, the calibration steps or it'll just be quite seamless. Okay. Uh, one other thing with the marking system or the marker system is uh, the way that Tim and our other engineers implemented it. The software, our desktop software, the core of that is not so integrated into the tracking system that it can't be easily separated. So our desktop software is really using a tracking system which tracking system that is, is something that is not going to be very difficult for us to switch to, which is, is great. Okay, are we going now? Yeah. yeah, fantastic. So you saw some of those features that Tim was playing with on the desktop. Uh, we still have, he's selecting parts. I think there's a bit, can you see uh, in the audience there? There's a little bit of a glare. There's a bit of difficulty seeing the... <laughs> Let's do the do the due to the lighting. So, um, if you look quite closely, you can see the outline of the virtual geometry. There, that's a good one. That's the air cleaner cover there. That uh, outline is taken directly from what you just saw on the desktop. We've turned it into outline view that we also have as a feature on the desktop software, and that's what we're using as the. Um, the graphic that's superimposed over the real equipment to support you in doing your tasks. So we do have, oh, Tim just closed it. There was a parts finder uh, list too. So if you want to take a look to see at where, um, oh, that there, that one, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, the parts finder there. There is a list. Uh, if we have some time after, you're welcome to come up and play with it. Um, that allows you to maybe access an internal part and know its situation in context of the real equipment. Um, the, the, the parts information, that's what you did have open. I, I was one step away from Tim. That uh, information that you can see that's attached to the part that you've selected, bring that down. You can't see it very well here, but that's actually a table that gives um, a topic and a value and those items you can enter in a table on the desktop in, well, pretty much a table that lets you customize the header and the value and that's uh, easily changeable. You can add or uh, delete the columns and put the information that you want that's uh, relevant and important to your company. Um, let's look at the resources. I'm not sure if that's gonna, there is still that glare, so you, we apologize for the glare part. The resources, there are three tabs actually there that show uh, flows, those images, the 2D technical diagrams, and also that video. Um, maybe if we open up, oh, you can see the flow there. So there's, um, I think that's a fuel flow. Is that the fuel one? You can see the directional arrows that show you the direction of uh, fluid flow in the equipment were it running. Uh, if you look at the images, you can see the 2D diagrams and you can put as many diagrams as you wish in there. Ideally, your um, most important uh, technical diagrams or information. Um, this allows you to have everything on the mobile device without having to also take your technical manual, manual with you or without having to exit this device and go to a separate site to get that information online. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's good. That seems to be a better angle. Okay. Uh, let's go down to the annotations. So another feature that we've um, got in here is the ability if a, an operator were in the field and noticed something specific about a piece of equipment, maybe some damage, um, it wouldn't be that hard to just do what Tim's doing right now. You take a picture, you can uh, uh, add your own annotations onto that diagram. Right now we have it set up just to email, so you can email yourself as a reminder. You can email a supply chain that they need to order this now. Um, it would be pretty much a matter of time and engineering resources to get that going bi-directionally, to get it talking to a server, and that would hook up nicely. Okay, uh, and I think the last um, big thing we wanna cover are the work orders or procedures. 
So Tim's opening this up. He's going to click on one. It says replace air cleaner element. I know it's difficult to see, but this is actually going step by step that how to step one, two, three, four of how to complete this procedure. Right now, the wing nut is highlighted as the first step. The first step is to remove the outer wing nut. So an operator would be performing these as they went. And as I said, right now, consider the, uh, the tablet as a, uh, it's an output. This isn't gonna stay hands-free. That's not the end of the story. Or this is, isn't gonna stay with your hands occupied. That is the end of the story. Um, because we have that, we've got the, what's, what they have built in is this, there's actually a little snowflake on there. It's the ability to freeze that scene. So in the absence of uh, that uh, next step of hardware, thank you, um, we let you freeze that screen and then uh, continue the uh, task or work order as you go. You can step through it and it's still working. It's retained that last image that you saw and the operator can go through the task. This is obviously a very simplified task for demonstration purposes, but you can imagine if this is something very complicated or if this is something that an, a maintainer wouldn't have to do, like maybe something that only has to be replaced every two years, if it's complex, it saves you the time of having to go back, retrain, re-remember, look at the technical manu manual again. It um, is of great help. Good? We don't have to complete the whole thing, no. <laughs> He's like, no, we don't. Um, I think we've pretty much covered all of the features uh, that are existing right now. Um, it's quite scalable because we have other features in Producer that we could port over as well. Uh, I just want to, I wanted to point out a couple things. I wanted to point out that we're using the 2D system on purpose and we're totally going to go to the 3D object recognition and tracking system. And then I wanted to talk about the tablet. And the third point I wanted to talk about was the value of using augmented reality. But I'm, I, like, I'm so happy of all the people that we could have included in our group that Steve was here to go first because before I even met him, a year ago as a usability specialist, I was looking for research and Steve's been sharing that on YouTube. And to find that and to see the, what I wanted to see, which was its increased accuracy, increased uh, time to finish, and almost most of all, uh, the preference of maintainers to use something like this. So if your workforce is more engaged, that's like great. So again, thank you for sharing all that because that really helped me be really confident in the design that we had. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really glad to be included in this group and I'm really happy to see all of the other uh, demos in industrial and uh, enterprise uh, design for augmented reality. Good? Yep, thank you. Thank you.